Right. I'll give people a few moments to uh, to come in, but uh, welcome, September. Here we are. Tell you what, it's not... Uh, I feel that like we haven't had any summer whatsoever this year, except um, except maybe in the last month, as, as we'll talk about, I'm sure, this evening in the crypto market, which is starting to pick up again. Don't know how long for. I'll give you my opinion on that, uh, that shortly. But um, so... Obviously, we went out into the Telegram group this evening. Uh, Siam, those of you who've been with me since last year, good friend of mine, Siam Kid, ex-Air Force pilot like myself, um, been a professional trader for many, many years. And he did a fantastic talk for us last year on crypto. Those of you who watched it will remember that he sold Ethereum at $2.20, hoping to buy back in at uh, one eighty. What a mistake that was. Uh, because it never came back um, and the lesson there is that you you know to try and trade those markets to try and trade those pullbacks is something that I, I rarely will ever do because that that exact case um, I'm very much a invest and allow it to to grow and there's been a lot of studies and statistics about about that so actually is it more profitable the idea being that you can add percentage more coins to your holding um, in, in that trading scenario. So as I said, those of you who remember Siam did that last year and I asked him if he would come on. He was due to come on in two weeks time. So the next session, um, and I spoke to him yesterday and again this morning to come on. I said, right, you know, why don't you come on now? Because we're seeing the movements as we speak in the, the crypto market. So come on, give, give, come on, give us your opinion and your view so roll forward to 6 45 this evening and i receive a phone call from siam who is no longer coming this evening so <laughs> he's put it back to the his original time now that's left me a little bit in the lurch tonight guys um so my intention is we're just going to have a little so i've got nothing prepared because it was obviously for our prep for siam so i'm going to do is i'm just going to have a little chat um but i will now because obviously I'm very conscious that uh, this session is now, I will prepare what I would have done for tonight and I'll probably deliver it early next week and then Siam will come on the, the regular session. So don't worry, you're not missing out. This Call this a little bit of a bonus session. But I thought I'd, I'd have a chat with you anyway because a few people have been asking about my movements, should we say, in the current market, a few of the posts I've put up recently and what I'm doing. Now, it's not only in... So apologies, I'll give you an apology for that. Apologies for that. He passes his apologies and I'm sure that he will do so when he comes. He just said something's come up, he can no longer do it. Now that's a typical pain in the arse because I obviously then didn't prep something, relied on him, 6.45 cancelled and I thought I'm not going to, I'm not going to cancel the meeting, I'd rather have a chat with you. So guys, if anybody's got any questions, please do, do forward them, prep them, ask them, we'll have this as a bit of an open forum. So what have I been up to? One of the biggest things I did this week is one of the projects that I absolutely, it's wrong to say it can't stand. Um, I'm just not as, I'm not not in the, the camp of many on the XRP train. Um, I was in it back in 2016, back in the very, very early days. It had a very, very similar hype cycle to it now. We're talking crypto now for those of you who, who, aren't, who don't know, but XRP, Ripple, is currently going through an SEC, the Securities and Exchanges Commission in America, to try and they are accusing it of being a, uh, a security due to the way it conducts business. Um, now, they are arguing that they're not, but this has been a court case that's been going on all this year. Now, I put up a... I'm not, as I'm not a fan of, of Ripple, don't get me wrong, they've got some good use cases, but it's the hype cycle behind it that I don't potentially potentially like. And I saw how it burned a lot of people back in 2017. So I'm not really a huge fan, but I look at the facts on the plate. And the facts on the plate currently stand that nobody, every, every situation where the SEC, had, the SEC has launched an investigation into uh, 
into any crypto organization. It's always resulted in a slap on the wrists and a fine. And that's generally what happens because it is such a, a kind of an unknown area uh, to pin anything tangible on something is a very, very difficult thing. So generally they will just highlight their findings saying, we do think you are a security. We now wish you to pay a fine. The last fine for an organization was for Tether, I believe it was. And Tether had a, 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 it may have even nibbled into the billion dollar fine, but paid the fine, moved on. So back to the SEC case, we're in September. The due to release the findings mid-September, they've said that a number of times in the past. So I wouldn't necessarily hang my hat on that. But an article came out this week of um, SEC officials who had bought XRP. Now, why that's interesting, and that was the, the post I put up into the group, and why that was interesting is because if you were in a bank or if you were working in the uh, London Stock Exchange or any of the, the, uh, the uh, fund management industries, and you got a tip off for, for say, a, a share. You had somebody buy a, a share in a huge quantity. Say you were across your desk came a, 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 a an account to buy into a big share. Now, what's happened in the past still goes on now is individuals in that bank would potentially buy that. So let's say I work in a bank, I'm a fund manager, and I get a request to buy $10 billion worth from another fund of, say, BP. So if I think, holy crap, that's going to move the market, okay, I could buy that myself in my personal portfolio, send a text message to a friend to buy BP before I then place their trade. That's referred to as market moving or insider trading. And that is highly illegal. Any form of insider trading is highly illegal. Um, it's a highly illegal activity, you know, huge penalties for that. Yet, lo and behold, we've got the SEC who are doing an investigation to an organization and you've got members of the SEC buying this asset, security, whatever they deem it to be. So what, did, what does that do? That basically says, wow, holy shit, there are a few things going on here. Either they know something we don't, I, the case is going to be thrown out with no findings. They are hedging their bets and they're quite fancy a little punt on it because they know it's coming to an end very shortly. Um, they may just be completely, who knows, you know, they may not know what's going on. But the thing I look at is I look at, or well, actually, you know, they know something that I don't. So what will come of this? Ripple have now exposed them um, for this. So the Securities and Exchanges Commission basically will have a number of choices. They will either throw out the case, at which point Ripple goes that way exceptionally fast. They will take the findings, which obviously these individuals have seen, to force the, which they've acted on to buy, so that SEC will look at that and be like, yep, actually there is no case to answer here. Ripple, pay a fine of 50 million, whatever that figure may be, slap on the wrist, move on, at which point Ripple goes that way. Or the thing that'll send it that way is if they say, uh, they throw the case out and go for a complete reinvestigation from scratch, from the start. So we look at this, this, this situation and you've got, in my eyes, two instances where it will rock it. And I think it'll rock it very, very fast. And then it will pull back very, very hard. And we've got another scenario which will send it probably to 50% of its value. So like anything, you look at that risk reward and you look at that asymmetry of the trade. Okay, so you look at 50% downside. Okay, now if it took a 50% downside because they decide to completely redo this, this investigation, what are we doing at that point? We're not selling at a loss because I still believe that the investigation will be in Ripple's favor. All that will happen is it may be 12 months down the line, 18 months down the line, because this investigation has been going on all this year. So actually what happens is, let's say we get that downside of 50%. Okay, we're, we're now sitting at, uh, where is it sitting right now? Let me just see where it's sitting as we speak. Um, 
so I'm just going to put some So it's currently sitting at finance. Yeah. What's it currently sitting at? One dollar twenty, one point two. So let's say we get a down a downside to actually probably would drop to the support there of about 0.5. So a little bit more than half. Okay. But you've got an upside risk, okay, straight back to its previous all-time high. Um I think is an easy is an easy target to reach which if we don't look on the chart for the all-time high if we look on coin gecko for xlp's previous all-time high just to get it accurate and i'm not going for any of these moonshots but let's just give you the facts that's what i said i would do in fact should i just quickly share the screen with you as well okay uh, you're doing auto correct. What are you doing? Uh, um, so we look at XRP and you look at its previous all time high there is $3.40. Okay, so it's current chart. Um, uh, sits so this is current so current chart sitting here and something else which I'll come on to in a moment <clears throat> And what a lot of people do is they'll scroll back like this and they'll be like, oh, actually, I only see an all-time high here of $2. And that's not the case because the all-time high was actually way back in 2017. So you've got to come and look at the actual facts. So we've got a $3.40, okay? So I look at that, okay, and I say, right, 1.2 to 3.40, okay? That's an or a 50% downside. So actually, that is an immediate, okay? So 50% downside would be, call it 0.6 of a dollar, okay, to the upside of probably five times that. So it's a five to one risk to reward ratio. Now, if it wins, I can see that easily. A lot of people are saying five to $10. And don't get me wrong, I'm not against the five to $10 mark, but bear in mind, I am purely in this for the asymmetry of the trade, not because I love the project. I actually would probably move my money out Add that rocket into something else. Um, something else that this is showing, okay, which I did is is this pattern here. Okay, so we are seeing a pattern, and lo and behold, if you actually put some lines on this pattern, what we are seeing is a a bullish pattern here where it's coiling okay where actually this will probably go like this 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 and lo and behold if you look where the apex of this is lo and behold it falls mid-september when the result is around to uh, about to supposed to be coming out now if mid-september like we think that's the way it's going okay if mid-september then it could come back down there. But this is showing, this is a bullish pattern. So the likelihood of that is far less unless that scenario plays out that I spoke about. So what have I done? I have sold up, um, I, obviously nothing I'd say, this is financial advice or advice in any set. I sold up a 70% of my Bitcoin position and bought Ripple. That is a hell of a um, bold move. Okay, but that's what I have done. And that's what people have been asking me, what have I been up to? And that is exactly what I've, I've done. That's pretty much the only big move I have made with my uh, crypto portfolio. I've done a lot of reading recently into what's called the metaverse. Um, and a few of the coins around the metaverse of which I've got a couple, but a very, very small holdings. Uh, but I think they are more 2025 coins rather than this cycle. So... 
that's it. That's one of the biggest moves I have made in this. One of the most other more significant things um, I have done in my share portfolio is I started a very small position in Alibaba. Okay. Um, those of you who know that was on the previous report, the new report's currently been written and will be out early next week. Obviously, today is the first, it'll be out probably Monday. Alibaba still sits on there, and that's a, a small position. My only ISA and share positions now are mainly in my child's ISAs. I'm personally not adding to my own ISA. I am very heavily weighted into the crypto front. Have been throughout the year, and I've just DCA'd in uh, throughout this, so I never exited. I just continued to DCA. Um, so I've got a message there. So, you know, in the last 10 days, XRP has already gone up. Is it still a buy? So what we're looking at here, here so we're looking at there, obviously you see this is a daily chart. So each one of these candles represents a daily time frame. So this one being today, as you can see, it's touched the top of this trend line. Now, if this holds, if this pattern holds, you can expect XRP to fall back down to about the 1.06-ish level, or maybe maybe just around there if it didn't make a lower low. So if I was looking to open a position in this now, I probably wouldn't do it now because we're at the top of uh, the, the the top line of this pattern. Now, if it made a positive break through that pattern, I'd look for a retest of the pattern, okay, which then would be an entry at about the 1.21. So to summarize what I've just said there, I personally would not be opening a position where it is now. Okay, I would either be waiting for it to descend. I wouldn't be looking for the bottom. That's been very greedy. I'd be looking probably for midway. So I'd probably look for an entry at around the 1.13-ish, 1.14-ish mark, just to get a little bit more bang for your buck. Okay. Or if it positively broke this pattern here. Okay. So it positively broke out there. I would wait for the retest and I'd be entering at around the 1.2. So you're not getting as good an en entry potentially if you went in now, but the chances of that happening are far less than this happening down here. Hope that makes sense. Okay. Do I advise, you know, again, nothing I say is advice. Do I advise going in? You've got to look at why I have entered this. Okay. I always say you've got to love a project. You've got to understand what you're going into with crypto and you've got to be prepared to hold it for the long term. Now, I am going into this on a, a, a purely risk to reward basis. That's it. I, I'm not a fan of XRP. A lot of people will are diehards and love it and love what it stands for, love what it's going to do to the banking sector. And I'm not doubting it, it has some good use cases. It just doesn't really sit well with me, having seen um, the way the hype train in inverted commas kind of broke it back in 2017. So I wouldn't necessarily say this is a move for everybody. It's a move for a small portion of your portfolio. Um, if that is something that you wanted to do, but you've got to bear in mind, you may well be seeing 50%. Okay. You've got to bear that in mind and you've got to understand the implications that you may well easily see 50%. And I say 50%. Um, I see, I see realistically if it's, if if things went down, you know, then you would be seeing levels. That's where you would probably get to. So it's probably, you know, it's more than fifty percent. What is that in a in a drop? About fifty five percent. Not not far off. Fifty five percent. Fifty six percent. Yeah. That's my biggest crypto move. What else have I done? Um, I. I'm still holding strong Ethereum. You know, I was always an Ethereum bull. Those of you who follow good old Raul Paul, you'll you'll know that he this week had come out. I mean, he also again, I'd, I opened this one up. He also says exactly the same thing as what I've just said with regards to XRP. However, I did it uh, before. I'll play. I'll let you listen to that if you wish. So if let's let's fast forward. I want to talk about. Uh, XRP. We'll, we'll get to Solano. It's a Cardano, you know, competitor. Huge moves lately for it. I'm sure it's, your portfolio is doing well with it. But I want to talk about XRP because XRP is the most interesting coin in this bull run to me from a price standpoint. 
the it, it's one of the only major coins that did not hit a new all time high during the first phase of this bull run. Now, the reason for that is pretty simple: the SEC lawsuit. But I believe that thing's going to get cleared up before the end of this bull run. I think actually sooner rather than later, and that sets it up to have an even bigger bounce in the second half of this bull run due to the suppression that occurred in the first half. Do you, do you have any thoughts on on first the lawsuit? Uh, and what maybe that has, you know, what effect that can have on crypto in general. And then, you know, what do you see for, for XRP? Unfortunately, we I think we totally agree with each other. XRP is a great risk reward, right? The lawsuit, we've seen every lawsuit, every single one has been a fine. Mm -hmm. Everyone. A slap on the risk because everybody's actually cleared up after the event anyway. And these were events were a while ago, you know, BitMEX, that's happening. Um, we're going to see all of this. So I think it's going to be a slap on the wrist, but it could have looked like a security. There'll be no admission of guilt on either side. Mm -hmm. There'll be a payment of a fine, and then XRP is, is free to run. What's interesting about XRP is there is quite a lot of use cases. Now, I know a bunch of Bitcoin people hate it. It's not decentralized enough. I don't care. It's, you know, are people using it? Um, yes, a lot more than most people realize. And what's amazing about this setup is you can't buy us on any of the exchanges. And yeah. it's not in the Bitwise ETF. The Bitwise ETF is now a billion, uh, the Bitwise index is, you know, the top 10 index is a billion dollars. So the moment XRP is freed, they have to buy a few hundred million dollars of it, as everybody else can, because the exchanges will have it back. So you're setting up for a hell of a nice run if this clears up. Worst case, it doesn't. You know, worst case is, let's say, 50% downside. Best case is 10x from here. So I'll take a 50 to 1 risk reward for the next, you know, three to six months. Yeah, I think I think 10x is uh, pretty good from this point. I mean, that would put it over $10. I, I think 10 to $15 is probably in the right range for where we should see XRP go. There's a much more bullish case, in my opinion, where we could see higher 20 to 30, but that would be, you know, all of a sudden, bank after bank is coming out of adopting. And what a lot of people don't understand is that we're also focused on the XRP lawsuit, rightly so, and its effect on the price. But, you know, there's a there's a phase two. There's a step two of this, which is after this is cleared and they get the SEC lawsuit out of the way, they're officially not in security. Well, now that sets Ripple Labs to go public. And that's something that a lot of people aren't talking about. So if you look at what caused Bitcoin to go up at the peak in, in phase one, it was the Coinbase IPO. And to talk about a Ripple Labs IPO, you know, I, I think it's very significant. Remember, the Bitcoin, the Coinbase IPO, remember, by the rumor sell of fact, was the yep. exact high of Bitcoin to the day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Which is why. All right, I'll stop that there. But you can see, I mean, that was the same kind of viewpoint as me. I, hey, it was one of those things. I think I think it's, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at what he's seen and what I saw. I didn't see it from him. I did a bit more research before I went heavy into it. Um, um, bu -bu -bu. Can't buy it on any exchanges. They're discussing America. You can still buy it on Binance. Obviously, Binance today, I believe, opened up their bank deposits back into Binance. They opened up their credit card and debit card payments back into Binance last week. Uh, but obviously, that carried a 1.5% fee. Uh, you can now, I believe, I haven't looked and I haven't checked, but I got a notification to say that they were opening their SWIFT payments back up. I didn't do that. I simply transferred um, Bitcoin into it from a Celsius wallet and then um, sold from there, transferred from there. So what they are saying doesn't apply, or it applies to crypto.com. It applies to uh, a lot of the other US-based platforms, but Binance UK, you can go ahead and buy it. Um, what else has happened? Right, I've done a big shuffle again. I'm going to talk, talk briefly, talk crypto, and then we can, can move on to something else. I did a big shuffle this week of or last week of staking platforms. Now you all are aware of the risks involved in staking. In the past, I've always used BlockFi and Celsius. BlockFi changed their interest rates yet again from the first of September, so I have now exited BlockFi 100% out. Okay, and I am now staking on Celsius. Um, 
Oh, you can buy it on Kraken. Yeah, there you are. You can, so you can still buy it everywhere. So I mean, that line, don't don't worry about it. And um, I now stake on Celsius, on U Hodler, and on Lenden. Okay. Um, you can go and search and do your own research on those platforms. I've done significant research on those platforms to ensure the security and the safety of each one. Um, and those, the, they they do all come out the top. I stake everything on between celsius and you hodler the only thing i use on lending is bitcoin because it sits at 6.5 percent interest you can get 12 percent on your stable coins usdt and usdc on those platforms as well so that's a significant return 12 percent um paid out weekly on a compound effect obviously those of you who did hex as well hex uh, obviously plays out in in you know, on those platforms as well. Um, so that's currently where I stand on. Um, uh, those of you who've just joined, actually, I think Kane's just messaged me asking where uh, what, what's happened to Siam. I'll just mention to those of you who joined late, he unfortunately literally at quarter to seven tonight slipped this back. He was always penciled in for two weeks' time at quarter to seven tonight. So obviously I didn't prepare what I was going to do because we agreed that he was going to bring it forward to this evening. Unfortunately, he cancelled on me last minute. So as I said, I'm going to do a Q&A tonight. So if you've got anything, guys, please do ask a Q&A this evening just as a bonus. I will then do a session, a fill-in session next week, and then we will have Siam. So you will get the, the same number of sessions. Um, I think that's about all I... What else has been going on? Can I check which platforms you use to buy XO? So somebody else asking there, right. Buying anything on eToro, right. Crypto on eToro, do not do it. Okay. Because on eToro, you are not buying the physical item. You are not buying the keys. Okay. You are buying, you are basically putting your money against it, but you don't own the keys. Therefore you don't own the asset. Yeah. So you've got to be using a crypto exchange in order to do that. The likes of Kraken, Binance, um, Coin, uh, Coinbase, you know, Kraken and Binance are the two that I, I personally use. I'm not a Coinbase fan, never have used Coinbase. I know a lot of people here do use Coinbase, but I personally don't. But the likes of eToro, the likes of Robinhood, um, Trading212, when it comes to crypto, you don't own the asset. You are buy, You are basically, you're almost buying it on their platform but you don't own it and why is that why is that or where will that see you you know you might 90 of the time you'll probably be all right okay but you don't own the assets so you can't remove it from the platform and put it onto a onto say a ledger or a wallet there's the old adage of not your keys not your coins okay keys are just that security code that goes along with it so the likes of robin hood the etoros um the trading 212s where they will sell crypto and in inverted commas. You're not buying the asset, you're parking money against it. Now, as I say, 90% of the time, you'll probably be all right. When you come to sell it, okay, they will probably just honor the price that's on the screen. If there was a large crash, okay, so bear in mind that they hold the asset. If there was a large crash, if the liquidity dried up, you will certainly not be getting paid out of that it's like a bet almost you know that's almost what you're doing you're almost spread betting on those platforms you're not physically holding the asset so to answer that last question which was dropped in the comments where to buy it please if you are going to buy any cryptos do buy them on a crypto exchange binance and kraken as say are the two that i personally use um actually one of the other questions that got asked i'm just going to open up my notes here because i did have notes for what i was going to do until siam jumped in was what a lot of people want the small cap gems okay so here is some research on those and again um please do your own research into these, but I'm going to give you some names. And again, some of these names I will be discussing in the report, but by all means, seeing as, as this, the, tonight is just a chat, go and do them. Paid, P-A-I-D. Okay. Now that 
until Sunday did a did a huge run, a good five x up until Sunday, and now that was all to do with um, the launch of a, of an airdrop on Sunday. So there's then a lot of people sell immediately after that. So it's taken a significant drop, about fifty percent since Sunday. And what are we now on one on Wednesday? So a significant drop of that. They did it to get involved in in what was called the Star Atlas uh, airdrop. But paid remains a very, very solid, relatively low cap coin if you were looking at that. Some of the other ones are anything really built on the Solana network. We've all seen what's happened to Solana. Those of you, I think I talked about Solana when it was God knows where. Um, but anything built on that Solana network, a lot of people now are saying that Solana may well be doing what ETH did in 2013 2017 and on that rocket ship i certainly wouldn't like to be buying into it now okay without maybe a significant pullback um i mean i've got i've personally got solana been invested in it a long time would i you know if somebody says to me would you buy it now it's a difficult one it's a difficult one it's been parabolic now for quite some time without a significant pullback um, I initially was going to sell at £55 um, and it broke, I think it got as high as 95 I think it's dropped to 80 ish at the moment. So in my, I didn't actually sell at 55 because I was on holiday in Wales, so I'm quite pleased I was away then. But that to me, it's, that was my sell point. But anything built on the Solana network has huge legs. Now, two of the ones which I personally like on the Solana network are Radium, okay? Radium, again, was part of an airdrop last week. So Radium's worth a look. And the um, oh, the other one on the Solana network. I can't find it in my... Is it our weave? No. No, again, another one. A serum. Serum was one that I quite liked. Um, built on the Solana network. Only if you play in those low caps, only if that's where you want to be, worth one, one's worth to go and have a look at. Um, but, 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 right, guys, any points, questions, queries from you? Again, once again, I'll apologise for that. Uh, I don't like being let down. I've been let down twice today, haven't I, Howard? You know the, uh, not that it's you who let me down, but obviously you know the backstory to my other letdown, which I'll not go into here um but yeah that is is by the by so what i plan to do guys is i say massive apologies for this because i didn't prep it because obviously Sion was coming so i will prep the the talk i had for probably next wednesday i would do it tomorrow but i'm actually going to um in fact here we are let's let's uh, uh i can't really show you i'm, I'm off to a watch meeting tomorrow at Sterling Lines. For anybody who knows any military history, you'll know where Sterling Lines in Creedon Hill is in Hereford. So it's the home of the SAS. And we're discussing a, a watch that is being made for them. So it's a, a big old drive for me tomorrow. But so hence, unfortunately, I can't just roll tonight into tomorrow night. But that's a, a watch that's being um, released specifically for um, 22 SAS. Um, and then potentially will be open for sale. Um, and I've, I've managed to get myself involved in it, shall we say. Any Cardano projects that you know of that will be launching after the smart contracts? Mm. None that I would really hang my hat on, Michael, if I'm honest. There are a lot of them. Please do go and research. My, and again, I'll just reiterate, those of you who, who haven't been with me from the start with regards to crypto, my plan, and again, Please do, those of you in, are, are, who are in crypto, don't think this will go on forever. That's what why most people end up millionaires out of crypto and then end up broke um, from it at the end of the runs. Now, we've had this, this huge um, big peak, and this is my, my view, we had this huge big peak and then the crash in May. Now, do I think we are going to see the, the moon boy figures, should we say, of... $250,000, $300,000 Bitcoin. If I'm honest, I now don't on this cycle. I really do think that's going to be a next cycle thing. Again, my opinion, let me just try and find you um, to talk a little bit more about 
So I'm just trying to find you a, a page which I'll have open because I never really close pages. About dominance. Um, and, and then I'll talk a little bit around that. Uh, have I, why haven't I got this handy? Stand by, I'll just try and... Right, I can't find the site I normally use to show that. But basically, here's a... Here we are, this will show you. Okay, so I'm just going to give you a little bit of. So, yeah, don't think it will all. Right, so this here is that's a crap chart. Uh, here we are, let's get a fully featured one. Right, people get nailed in cycles, okay, because. Um, they are cycles. Now, there's a lot of argument at the moment. And again, it's about understanding the bull and the bear case, the pro and the con of everything. So I always will reiterate the bull and the bear case that this cycle won't see the huge drops of previous cycles. And actually what we're going to get, it's referred to as the drunken, the drunken wander up. OK, that actually now we've had such mass adoption. We've got ETFs launching for crypto. We've got huge organizations and institutions buying it, the likes of um, micro strategy all the way down to smaller institutions as well but still significant sums that actually that mass adoption we haven't uh, isn't going to see that huge uh, 70 80 90 percent drop okay so that's one argument for that now we also haven't seen the the, the fever pitch uh, that we saw back in 2017 you and i and everybody on here probably sees it all in your social media feeds because everybody's an expert uh, once the, once it's going up, but nobody talks about it when it's going down. So you're probably seeing it. So you probably perceive that we're actually in a bit of fever pitch because everybody's talking about, but that's only because the people that you hang out with and the people that you have on social media are all into the same things. You've all got those common goals. So you've got to try and look. And again, I say this for everything. If you start walking around and looking at the world with the eyes of the majority and not the minority, you'll start seeing things differently. So look at the, the world with the eyes of the majority, okay? Everybody usually has heard of crypto. You know, you'll hear people talking about it on the street. You'll hear people talking about it on the bus or whatever. The majority talk about it. They're not yet invested because the, the easy routes in aren't yet there. Back in 2017, there was a number of platforms that were launched to allow fast, easy trading of crypto on your phones, okay? So hence that fever pitch, everybody was in it, not just talking about it. Now, a lot of those fell by the wayside and subsequently banned due to regulation. So that easy routine hasn't yet really occurred. You've got to go through the rigmarole of opening up a trading account or opening up an account and cracking your Binance. It's not an easy thing to do. And even once you've got them, they're not user friendly okay so we haven't seen this mass fever of everybody on the street getting into it they talk about it but they're not in it okay so that's one thing to bear in mind so there's that argument of is it just going to trundle 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 i unfortunately don't buy into that i do see it's going to be a repeat of 2013 2017 lo and behold i think it's going to be I always perceived it was going to be back end of 2021. I think it might have pushed right to 2022 early-ish doors. Now, we saw that correction in May, very much on a Wyckoff-ish pattern. And again, I've spoken about that a lot. And then we saw it come out. And here we are in May. Okay, Bitcoin dominance. This is a Bitcoin dominance chart. was very, very low. Yeah. Now, Bitcoin dominance started to rise throughout June and July. So what did that mean? That basically meant that Bitcoin, and this always happens, whenever there's a, a bearish 
sentiment, the altcoins will fall more because the altcoins, anything but Bitcoin, the altcoins will always follow suit and lag Bitcoin. Okay, so this is what happened. We saw Bitcoin dominance start to rise. Don't worry about all these ups and downs. Just look at the general trend. The trend is up. And we saw that till pretty much the beginning of, of um, August, at which point it started to dip again. And nobody really thought anything of this dip. But actually, when it started to get to mid-August, Bitcoin dominance was then positively falling, which it's doing now. So what does this actually mean? Well, what that means is we're moving back into altcoin season. So what I think is Bitcoin now has found this home between around the 45 to 50-ish mark. And I think it's going to hover there probably for a good while, four to six weeks. And you're going to see the alts start to outperform. We've seen it already. You've seen Polkadot catching up with a 15% rise. You've seen the likes of Cardano freaking going through the roof. Solana through the roof. Bitcoin hover. Ethereum today, I think, has done 11%. So you've seen those alts rally. Now, this is a long way of me saying that at the end of this alt rally, how do I know when that alt rally is ending? Well, what we'll start seeing is we'll start seeing this rise again. At that point, I will probably start my exit of the crypto market, okay? My intent is to be still probably around the 70, 85-ish, 80-ish, around there, that 70 to 85 window, should we say, percent out of crypto in its entirety before the end of this bull run, with the intent of maybe holding 15% in Bitcoin only to the next cycle to see if it does this drop. And then my intent will be to buy back in um, to it. But I'm going to base that on this, on majority of this data. This is one key indicator. There's another one called the Pi Cycle Top, which I will also look at. And I will also look at a couple of other key indicators to make my educated decision when it's just time to get out. And that's why I didn't get out in May, because only one of those four indicators showed its hand. Okay. So for me, it was not. A conclusive sign that we were at the top of the market and i've just made these up it's you go back in history and you look and you'll back test and they do stand the test of time when three of those in three of those four indicators show their hand i'm out but i'm not out in the entirety i'll flip everything into bitcoin and i'll be out of 70 to 85 percent of of the remainder okay if that makes sense so um i think i got onto that question with reference to the Cardano projects. So what, why I've done all that harping on is the fact that there is a lot of projects launching on Cardano, a lot of projects launching on Solana and the other networks, which I view very much as true 2025 projects. It's not saying you're not going to see this parabolic run up 10, 15, 20x. Okay. You may get it right. But for me, that's not the game I play. I prefer the blue chips now because we're nearing the end of the cycle. Yeah. Those low caps I've just said, the likes of paid, the likes of serum, those sort of things, they are the ones that if I wanted to punt on, okay, a very small percentage, that's where I'd be punting. I haven't gone into any of them. Um, it's just not my scene. The only punt I've made in inverted commas is the one into XRP, which I'd consider a punt, but that's a very educated gamble. Um, I don't really play the low cap coin game now when nearing the end of the cycle. So I want to be out is the crux of it. And there's a lot to be said about being out. You know, you've got to have lifestyle tokens, you know, and I view crypto as lifestyle. And then all I will do is I'll reallocate those uh, takings. I'll pay my taxes on it. And I will reallocate those back into the share portfolios, back into my property portfolios, back into the other sectors of the pyramid that I always talk about. If you haven't seen the pyramid, please go back and watch one of the first videos I ever did in the portal. And you'll understand what I'm referring to in the pyramid. And all I'll do then, roll forward 2024, bosh, straight back into crypto, exactly as I did beginning of 2020, and just play that cycle again. One thing I was going to say there, right, there's a lot going around at the moment. When I say a lot, uh, Kane showed me a TikTok video this week and i've also looked at and seen it on um 
on 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 a YouTube video on it as well, and it's about taxes and crypto. And I know we've got like John's on here, who is is you know very um, clued up on um, on crypto taxes, but and and I'm not going to get into that. But the thing that was being harped on about is that there are now um, this TikTok video was showing a a bullion company gold bullion company that was accepting crypto for gold bullion and they were promoting that actually you can legally skirt paying taxes on your crypto by buying gold bullion with your crypto and then taking that gold bullion to a cash converters and cashing it in that's not the case okay you would be liable for taxes. And it's quite interesting that these kind of things are picking up speed or the avoidance of, and for me, it's not worth it, okay? There are, I, I did a lot of looking about whether it be offshore, Portugal still needs, is, is a route for legally not paying taxes, but you've got to be a resident there and there's a lot of other things. I know two people now who've moved to Portugal for that exact reason, but they do crypto full time um, and they're both retired. So they can do that quite frankly but that route which i seem to think is getting talked about is not the case not a legal case you might never get found out but it's not legal and that's a different scenario it's like me going to the supercar garage down the road here who've accepted crypto for years and saying right well actually i'm going to take my bitcoin here and i'm going to go and buy a ferrari which who knows i might do that but the point is i'm still liable for tax at that liquidation of the Bitcoin into an asset. Okay, so I would still have a tax bill. So if I took say two Bitcoin, if there were $50,000, there's a hundred grand, go and buy myself a car for it. I would be liable for tax on that hundred thousand. Yes, I'm driving a car with it, but I'm still liable for tax. Would I ever get um, um, uh, 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 selling the asset which is yeah but like i've said there you, you are still liable for capital gain tax okay because it's the crystallization of that that asset um that's a crypt crypto property market we know it's going now actually one thing I, I do want to talk about um and again this will this was part of my presentation which which I'll, i will put together and present but i just want to talk about it we're, we're all sat we're seeing equity markets at all-time highs daily weekly seeing all-time highs then dropping back to what's been the trend line since um since kind of march last year so the equities are still at these all-time highs and one of the interesting stats is is that against um actually we are perceiving equity markets going up like that but what we're not doing is transposing that onto the value of the dollar which is doing that and actually when you take out the deflation the, the 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 falling dollar into the equity markets they're actually fairly flat so what does that say that actually says to me verifying that actually says to me you know realistically if the u.s government which i dare bet they probably will start printing money once again or at least state that they're going to start printing money by the end of the year again I don't think we're going to see this crash. I really, really don't. Um, I think it's just going to continue. Um, maybe not in the parabolic manner that it's done or as steep it's done, done, but I'm becoming less and less inclined because of the falling, falling US dollar of, and the, with, I talk US dollars, but that obviously reflects into the UK market as well, um, that we may not see this huge, huge correction just yet i do think it will come but maybe not um um that close should we say so again it's just one of those things i keep an eye on and it's very a little bit easier um to explain with a few graphs um so marcus um but, but, no howard would you consider lending against, right, lending it in again, so Howard's just asked me, would I consider, consider lending against my crypto rather than selling it, maybe more tax efficient reason. Now, the, the danger with that, so if you're talking at the end of the cycle to borrow against it and then hold the asset while the cycle dips, 
I guess the trouble with that is the point at which you get liquidated by the exchange. So when I looked last, which was probably last week, maybe the week before, I looked at taking a loan out against my Ethereum. Ethereum is my biggest holding, so it's the easiest one for me to get a loan against. The liquidation figure was $900. So what does that mean? That effectively means that if Ethereum spiked below 900, so that scenario, and I'll give you the full scenario, that was me borrowing 30 Ethereum's worth of money, but I had to tie up 100 Ethereum. So they would hold as collateral 100 Ethereum to lend me 30 Ethereum's worth of money. And I would be liquidated if it got to $900. So I guess, yes, you could, don't get me wrong. And there is, there is nothing wrong with borrowing it against to hold it through to the next cycle. I guess I just look at it and I'm like, it's that risk of liquidation, the risk of, are we going to see $900 again? Um, if it spikes below $900, it's a consideration. Absolutely. It's not something I'm, I'm, I don't think I'd like to carry the loan for that length of time. You can take loans out for up to 72 months on Celsius at 0% interest. Um, what you are losing there, so again, that sounds very attractive, but what you are losing with the platforms like Celsius, you get 5.5% interest on your Ethereum. So I'm borrowing 30s worth, but I'm tying up 100, which means I don't get interest at 5.5% on 100 Ethereum, okay? So yes, I'm borrowing at zero, but I'm also not getting any interest on that 100. So I think Marcus uh, articulated it very well a couple of weeks ago and said, you know, it is um, it is simply opportunity cost that you're losing. You're losing that that interest, that opportunity cost. So I don't think I'd like to hold it for that long, that, that debt. I'm not ruling it out, Howard, don't get me wrong. Um, it's just, I've always had the plan and you know, it's that classic case of you, you make a plan, try and stick to the plan to exit. Now, don't get me wrong, but plans change and I've changed my plan many, many, many times. As long as you can educatedly look at why you're changing it, then, then dig out and change your plan. But if there's not an educated reason, you just think, actually, I'm just gonna borrow it against it because I don't wanna sell it um, because I think I think is a term that I hate. I think that it's not going to drop. Not for me. So crux of it, yes, consideration, not something I have um, really looked at yet, but it is definitely a consideration. The downside of that is you've then run the risk. Uh, you see, again, what, if we do see a big bear market, like I've said again a few times, when we see these big bear markets, I worry sometimes about these staking platforms and their level of security and their level of liquidity. Because you've got to bear in mind how they make that money, how, how they make the money to pay you the interest is by them lending your crypto out. So they can pay 12% on stable coins. They can pay 6% on Bitcoin because the lending, you deposit your coins onto their exchanges. They are then lending that out. It's exactly as banks do when you put your money into a bank, except they're paying interest. What worries me is if we see this huge bear market, okay, similar to 2013, 2017, and we see a 70, 80% drop and a sustained drop. Yes, you could argue we saw a drop in May and nothing happened to these exchanges, but it wasn't sustained drop. If it was sustained for maybe 12 months, what would happen to some of these loads? Are they then gonna change the goalposts and say, actually your liquidation figure is X or Y? I guess we don't know. And that's why I've always said, when I see us approaching this bear market, I will exit. I probably will to answer Graham's question in there. Hold some of it in stable coins on a on a on a platform to gain those 10, 12 percent returns. But I'll also be very wary and potentially pull it out because it's never been tested. Nobody's ever tested one of these. You know, you're not insured on them. You know, it's your own risk. They can fall down overnight. Some of them are, are saying you can buy into insurance. I think Celsius now is offering an insurance product that's not on the market yet, but you'll buy insurance on your crypto. Do you know, it's 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 kind of a bit Wild West-ish. And I see it, if it, if it does see a 70, 80% drop in a, in a true bear market, you know, we don't know is the crux of it. We don't know. 
Um, um, on, on the SEC, uh, Rich, go, going heavy on on the on the uh, USDC coin, is it Gary? Gary is he named Gesler or something? The, the, USDC, the, so it's Heather. Uh, it's, it's Heather that's being. Oh, 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 it's, oh it's Heather. Okay. It, it's okay. Yeah, and that's why a lot of people skirt away from Tether again because um, Tether can just openly print. It's backed by nothing. Where you know, uh, and again, you can look at Tether chart. So. Again, there is there is an argument like the US dollar, like the US dollar. You know, there is an argument that Tether effectively could just go bump, which is why I have elected to not hold anything in USDT and use USDC. A lot of people now are holding it in the likes of Pax Gold, um, which is another stable coin, but it's backed by gold. So roll back to the sixties with the gold uh, standard of the dollar. Um, so yeah, it's tether. It's worth again. It's worth one of those little things, guys. If you ever want to do a little investigation, just do a little bit of googling on tether. A lot of people call it the biggest scam, the biggest Ponzi scheme out there. USDT, which is why I say I've always stated on here that I would hold my stables in USDC. Um, Callum spoke there about um, about staking and how is it too late to start right i think you are confusing the likes of say eth 2.0 staking or locked staking with just the likes of platform staking so the likes of eth 2.0 staking or um, locked staking will have a period of time that you have to to to, to hold those coins for eth 2.0 staking is until eth 2.0 comes out but there's other ones which are you might have to lock it up for 90 days or two months and here, there, and the other. And you can't release them from that staking until that time is up. Okay. Are you too late? That's for you. Are you too late for that level of staking? That's for you to decide. I personally now don't lock any of mine up for any more than 30 days. Okay. So I still lock my, say, Cardano and things like that for 30 days, but no longer. So it gives me that flexibility of potentially exiting if i need to but you also get the likes of celsius being probably the main platform where i've got the majority of my holdings where there's no time period um so you can deposit into celsius they'll pay i say it's 5.5 percent on ethereum um up to synthetics i've got in there's at 12 percent is one of the highest ones etc etc without a locked period whatsoever and it can be released immediately back to exchange so to answer your question, are you too late to stake? No, not at all. Um, you can, but maybe not locked staking for an extended period of time, but definitely you can stake on those platforms, gain a little bit of interest while you can, but please do understand the risks of staking. I've staked for a long, long time. I am comfortable with those risks. And when I talk about risks, I've spoken about this many, many times on these Zooms. The old adage of not your not your keys, not your coins, because you're depositing your crypto onto that exchange. That exchange, in order to pay you that interest, is lending your crypto out. Yeah. So you've just got to be comfortable with those risks. Yeah. But you're not too late to start. Celsius, as I said, I've moved away from BlockFi because they've slashed their interest rates now to the point where it's, it's not really worth it. But again, you could have immediate access to your coins you hodler is very good and as i say lending but all lending has on it currently is usdc and bitcoin you can't stake anything else but they're not locked staking so that's the key callum is 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 don't locked staking it up um bu, bu, bu. yeah graham you know what you've said there about holding it in stable coins pulse to bull run eight ten and twelve percent absolutely you know that is an absolute intent, you know, you you bang in a hundred thousand dollars that you've just made um, on on your crypto run into that platform, rather than bringing it back to GBP to pounds. Absolutely, you're going to get ten thousand pounds on it per year, or twelve thousand dollars per month, and actually you could have it as a side income to live off. Absolutely, and I do intend to do that with the amount that I leave in. Maybe I'll extend that, and I'll say, do you know what? What is the point in bringing it back to pounds? And again, that's an argument that a lot of people look at. They're like, well, actually, if I'm going to exit the crypto market, why would I do that and exit back to a def uh, an, an asset, pounds, that are actually 
devalue, you know, going down in value. Um, massive argument for that. I will exit, but purely park it in other assets. So I would exit, park it in property, exit, park it in, for me, it's watches or gold. Do you know, so you're parking it somewhere that's not, I'm not just holding pounds in my bank account. So you've got to be, again, it's all part of that exit strategy. But to answer the question is, is yeah, do you know what? Um, I would. Um, right. Uh, let's go see who is on here. Right. Dawn is not on here. And we've got a question on, on Hex. Right. Hex and Pulse. What are my views on Hex and Pulse? Um, Hex, from when we first spoke about it on here, has um, has more than doubled. It's actually done probably the best out of any cryptocurrency out there in, in that period of time. Uh, I'll talk about Hex first. So those, again, those of you who haven't seen um, um those of you who haven't heard about hex or were on here when we spoke about hex please it's a it's a it's a project that's run and operated by a fella called richard hart a uh, very clever fella been involved in the crypto industry for a long long time developed hex now hex is a, a cryptocurrency which is the utilitarian coin for the pulse chain okay so i'll talk about the pulse chain in a moment so hex is what you can buy at the moment to do it is a little bit convoluted you can only buy it through uniswap and a metamask wallet again if you don't understand what i'm talking about then don't try and enter into it because you've got to understand these things before you enter into them it's a little bit convoluted to buy but you then stake your hex on in hex staking pools and at the minute that's around 40 percent. now the difference here and again that can be released at any time but actually that's a bit of a lie when you stake it you stipulate the time period that you stake it for and it can be staked from anything from one day to 15 years okay now i personally would not be staking for that long but that's my personal point of view a lot of people have staked coins for that period of time if I go on there and I stake my hex for one year, but I at six month point realize that I need that money for something. Okay. I, I now I, I've got 20 grand tied up in hex for argument's sake. I can't leave it for another six months till my staking period expires. I need it back. I can get it straight away. I can go on to hex.com and I can release that money straight back to me. But the amount of interest I've accrued for that six months is sacrificed. OK, so I get my 20 grand back, but at the minute, Hex is paying 40 percent interest APY. So 20 grand in there. What would I have accrued? 40 percent in that is. Uh, 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 oh, man, my math is awful for eight thousand, four thousand. So in six months, I would have accrued four thousand dollars. Yeah. Hopefully people have got the math. That's 40 percent after six months. APY. I'd have accrued four thousand dollars. So if I try and exit my stake early after six months because I decide, look, I need that money, that four grand gets shared amongst every other hex staker. Okay. So that early sacrificial exit produces money that gets shared amongst the other hex stakers. And that's why hex staking rates are so high. So that's that's hex in a nutshell. Now it was. It was, it's been developed by Richard Hart. Now, the pro, you might think, well, bloody hell, that's awesome. The downside that I don't like is I don't like the fact that Richard Hart personally still um, holds the majority, okay, of the hex allocation. I don't like that, that one individual holds the majority. You might say, well, Cardano, there's so much held by Charles Hoskinson, or you might say Ethereum, there's so much held by Vitalik Buterin. There is, but not the majority, not 70 odd percent or, you know, huge, huge portion. That scares me a little bit. Okay. So that's for me a negative element to Hex. Right. Pulse Chain. Richard Hart's big vision was Pulse Chain. Pulse Chain is going to be a, a competitor 
should we call it? He calls it a non-competitor. He said it'll actually help the Ethereum chain. So it's going to be another chain. The likes of Solana, the likes of Cardano, but on, on a steroid type chain, the Pulse chain. There's all sorts of complexities where what you've got, hex will be automatically copied over into p-hex and things like that. So that's what Pulse Chain is. Now, there's a lot of people tried to do this before and a lot of people failed. In order for it to be successful, people have to buy into it and develop on it. What makes Ethereum successful is people developing on it. But I do think it will be successful. Okay, I do think Pulse Chain will have legs. If you aren't in Pulse Chain now, you can't get into it. You're too late until it launches. The key will be the price it launches, whether it's still worth going at. So that's kind of in a nutshell what Pulse Chain is and what Hex is. Hex is simply the utilitarian coin for Pulse Chain. Doesn't do anything else, okay? Pulse Chain will be a, a network that other developers can build upon. I do think Pulse Chain will do very well. I do actually think Hex will continue to rise, if I'm brutally honest. I really, really do. I think it, it will continue on its, its rise until at least the Pulse Chain is, 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 is launched. There are a few things that scare me. You know, Richard Hart holding the majority does scare me. He's a very clever man. Do I think it's a scam or a Ponzi? I don't, even though there's a lot of people who potentially think it is. I wouldn't be going all in on it. I'm just not that confident on it but I do think it is worth a, having an investment in it and staked, but staked for a period of time that you don't need to sacrifice. If you stake it for 12 months, don't try and take it out if the bull mark, you need that. With Hex, you are staking for the next cycle. You're staking for that long term. You're holding it for a long time. And that's where I know a lot of people who've just gone all in on Hex, they've done exceptionally well. And their point is they've, they've staked for the next five or 10 years. So at that point, they don't need to worry about their crypto. They're just sitting back. Yeah, they're not going to exit. Um, it's uh, exit after a bull run. They're just holding for the long, long term and reaping those those rewards that come from the from the staking. So my view on it, um, I do like it. There are again bull in the bear case. I do think it will do exceptionally well. I think Pulse Chain will do exceptionally well when it launches, especially those people who sacrificed into it. I really do. How long that will last is a big question mark. Um, because I'm not if it doesn't get mass developer adoption who then want to go and build upon it, I can see it then dying like many projects have in the past. However, Richard Hart has done it in a manner that hasn't been done before. So when I'm saying Many people have done that. Many people have built chains similar to Ethereum, which have failed. Well, Richard Hart's built a chain similar to Ethereum, but he's done it in a, in a, in a manner that nobody else has ever tried before. What that is, way above my pay grade. I don't know how that, what that looks like, but it is deemed to be completely different to any other chain that's been launched similar to Ethereum. So that's my view on it. I am invested in both, uh, both Hex and Pulse chain. I am tempted to put a little bit more into hex to get the copy of P hex onto the pulse chain. That snapshot, again, if those of you who were here for the talk, the snapshot never happened. Okay. Uh, back where, when, and it didn't because there was a, a, an error which they're still trying to fix. So that snapshot never happened. So you haven't yet got your snapshots on. Again, if, if that sounds gobbledygook to you, um, please go back and watch the video about hex. Hopefully that answers, that's my view on it. I do like them. I'm not an all-in type person. It's still a percentage allocation of a portfolio. You know, it's still, for me, I'm I'm, st I'm heavily weighted Ethereum and have Bitcoin and, and a, a little bit of Bitcoin now. I'm more your blue chip alts. I do have a little bit of help, Kex. I do have some Pulse Chain, um, but there are elements that scare me. Why is gold? Why is gold going? So yeah, gold is just sideways, even with rising inflation. Yeah, that'll be an interesting one. I think a lot of uh, very interesting. I think a lot of people have gone to digital assets, if I'm honest, Marcus, uh, and they are starting to park in, in your Bitcoin for the inflation rather than gold. Uh, will there be a notification of the Pulse Chain snapshot? Yeah, there were, well, yes, but 
it's kind of, it, it's very, where that will be done, it all seems to be done in very private Telegram channels, which you can go and join. Um, so that snapshot, I want, um, so in order to get the snapshot, you've got to have the ERC20 tokens in MetaMask. I personally have taken the, 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 the decision that I'm not going to hold my ERC20 tokens in MetaMask. I'll hold Hex in MetaMask and I'll get the snapshot of Hex across the pulse, but I'm not fussed about getting PETH, P link, anything like that. It's just the, the, the cost of holding it there was too great. So um, for me, it doesn't really matter. And but there will be, but I don't know where that will be. If you keep an eye out on like hex.com, the website that he runs is very good, but you'd have to keep looking at it unless you were part of the Telegram channel. I'm not in their Telegram channel. It would get announced in there. Um, so yeah. Uh, you can, no, right. Can you buy Hex on Binance? No, you can't and you never could buy it on Binance. Um, as I say, it's a convoluted way to buy it. You've got to send ETH or USD to MetaMask and then buy it from MetaMask or from Uniswap. If you don't know how to do that, okay, it's not a user-friendly type thing to do, okay? I would either advise go and do a hell of a lot of research you could send me a message on um, on Facebook Messenger. Send me a message about it, and I'll try and you know fit in a little bit of time to to talk you through it. But it would be uh, to talk you through that process of doing it on a one to one basis, or just don't get involved in it. Okay. Quite often, you know, you've got to look at. You hear a lot of people talking about how they've had this this ten x or this hundred x coin. And everybody gets formal. Just don't, just stick to what you know. If all you know is Binance, then stick to buying on Binance. If you don't know how to use other wallets for the likes of airdrops or anything like that, then, then and you're not prepared to do the research, then just don't try and do it. You'll end up sending coins on the wrong chain. I did it the other day. I've been involved in this space a long, long time. And I sent, it wasn't much, it was only like 20 Matic, because I was clearing up a wallet, 20 Matic on the wrong chain from Binance to Celsius, and that's it, they're lost into the ether for good. That's why they reckon, you know, there's there's over, uh, I think it's now at about two and a half or three million Bitcoin lost for that exact thing. People have sent them on the wrong chains, okay? It's very easy to do. I made a stupid mistake on a selection on my phone. I shouldn't have been doing it on my phone, and that's it, they're lost. Luckily, it was only 20, okay? Um, but it is easily done. And that's why there's millions of loss and you'll never recover them. They're gone for good, okay? Yeah, they, well, yeah, Howard did exactly the same. So Howard transferred USDC, okay? Used the wrong chain. So he used BEP20. The annoying thing is when you go onto the likes of Binance and you say, transfer me USDC to MetaMask, you'd like to think, that they're so tech savvy you'd like to think that it would automatically only offer you the chain that allowed that to happen why give you a selection of a chain that physically won't allow it to happen so when you do that usd howard lost usdc so it was usdc to metamask it will offer you erc20 bep20 and it would probably offer you a third option as well lo and behold only one of those works yeah but, and you, you look at it and you're like, I don't, and again, this is why I say it's so easy to do. You, you look at these crypto, the most technological advanced thing, yet you look at, I suppose they look, they view it as, well, actually you shouldn't be using these exchanges unless you understand a level of tech. Where I look at it and I'm like, surely if if I physically can't transfer it on, on BEP20 chain, just gray it out when I select to send it or something like that. But so, the, 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 the long and store, short of that story is if, if you really want to get involved in it, please do send me a message and I can talk you through it. It's not an easy thing. You must have, as I say, a MetaMask wallet, which you send from Binance. It's very expensive at the minute because the fees are astronomical. The last ETH I sent from MetaMask cost me over $100. That's astronomical at the minute. You can look at the cheap times to send ETH using ETH scan. If um, if none of you have ever used that before, 
uh, you, this is the, 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 I'll just drop the site in here. It's worth storing it as a, it's what's called a gas tracker. So you can, if you ever want to do it, you know, and you understand, you can just, oops, it is, you have sent that privately to, there we are to everybody. You can use that and it'll tell you the best time to send it. At the minute, it's about like two or three o'clock in the morning. Um, but it's bloody expensive. So the crux of that is, um, yeah, if you want to, if you're really interested in buying hex, drop me a message. We'll try and find some time over the next few days and I can talk you through that. Right. So that is the end of the questions. Guys, my intent then. Cyan is coming in two weeks' time, so this next formal meeting he is coming. He's a, he's a really good public speaker uh, on anything from crypto, and uh, he, he's done a lot of business acquisitions and sales in the past. So again, uh, anything like that that you want to do and talk to him about, by all means, bring questions to the table. Uh, very interesting chap. He, again, like myself, is, is using, is very heavily invested in crypto right now, but his intent is to get out and then deploy those assets to something else. Um, um, six to 12 weeks that you had a slip disc Marcus he's gone six to 12 weeks no Siam. he thought you said he slipped a disc he usually takes oh. six to 12 weeks to recover from it oh no 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 he just no he just came up with sorry something's come up oh right okay yeah at quarter two seven like yeah quarter seven 15 minutes before um so he is coming, uh, I said, fantastic, really interesting fellow. I like talking to him. I said, those of you on last time will, will know the error. I'm sure we'll, we'll bring it up that he sold his Ethereum, 20, two, two, $220, I think it was, or something like that, hope for a re-entry at, at 180, then never never look back. Um, so he will be on there, really interesting fellow, really some good lessons to learn, very knowledgeable about, you know, uh, global macroeconomics. So you know, do bring some comments, really interesting chat uh, guide to talk to i will now do a session next wednesday i said i can't do it tomorrow otherwise i could have just done tomorrow because i've got all my notes anyway and i know what i was going to talk about but i didn't prep the slides because i, I thought Simon was doing so please just keep your eyes out in the facebook group and on to the telegram which you are all part of so it's been a good hour anyway um i've enjoyed it hopefully it's answered the question very crypto heavy some very technical stuff. So I, I know some of you who are new to crypto, it may well have gone over your heads. And if crypto goes over your heads, the lessons, the, the things which I always say with regards to crypto is do not and never invest more than you can afford to hold for five years, i.e. till the next cycle. Yes, you may lose it. But again, with the blue chips, I've no, for me, they won't go to zero, but the, you may have to hold it to the next cycle. So never invest money that you may need at Christmas or in January or in February, okay? Because if it crashes, you only lose money if you sell at that loss, okay? If you buy Bitcoin now and it goes down to $20, don't cash it out, okay? Because the next cycle, it will exceed where you just bought it, but you may have to hold it till the next cycle. So don't invest more than you can hold till the next cycle. Um, Uh, uh, don't FOMO in. That was the other one I was going to say. Don't FOMO into coins and social media bullshit that you may hear because everybody's an expert in the bull market. Okay. So don't FOMO in. Stick to your what you are doing. If it's blue chips on Binance only because you don't want to store 5,000 in one password. And bear in mind that that's been an admin effort of mine over the past few weeks is actually making secure notes of every one of the passwords, every one of the accesses into everything, every single now site staking platform, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it goes to about bloody 20 lines on a spreadsheet um, because it forms part of my will. Because ultimately, if I cock it tomorrow, it's not like, you know, Amy could go to Barclays and say, Richard's dead, there's his death certificate, I'm the uh, executor of, of his estate, because it's held in Celsius, it's held in Moonlet, it's held in Kraken, you know, of which you can't just turn up at one of these places and say, hi, this is me, can I claim that million pounds, please? So it's, it's about them, you know, so again, 
bear that in mind, okay? And again, where are you going to store them? Because again, don't just store uh, passwords, etc., on your on your on your laptops. You know, as I say, mine's now being printed out and forms part of that will. Just bear that in mind. Don't FOMO into it. Um, if all that you know is is one exchange and you don't want to expand your knowledge, then don't try and do it on the back of a fag packet. If you want to expand and say buy things more advanced on the likes of MetaMask and Hex and things like that, either do reach out to me and I'll try and find the time to talk you through it or research it. And don't just use YouTube as your research tool. YouTube is a fantastic research tool, don't get me wrong, but it should only be one of the tools in a in a in a suite of research products okay um read their websites read youtube look for blog articles use twitter use reddit all of these sites to find forums on what you want to do um, and as i say even if you reach out to me and i just give you those resources it will hopefully help you out fantastic guys um hopefully that hasn't been a wasted hour for you uh, apologies once again, but we will make that up. So hopefully that's been a waste now for you. I think it's been a relatively good hour, quite frankly. And um, look, I look forward to keep your eye out on the Telegram, keep your eye out in the group. If anybody needs anything, drop me a message. If not, um, see you next week. Take it easy, guys. Have a good one. Cheers, Rich. Enough, bye. Cheers, Rich. Enjoy your trip to the tippy top secret place. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take some photos. <laughs> <laughs> Chat to the Afghanistan uh, interpreters that are still there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I think there'll be a few Afghanis in a hangar there, if I'm perfect, to be honest. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll tell a story about That's that. Selling watches. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> See you later, gents. Bye. Bye. Bye.